Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's Murray's Moments fountain pen review. This gorgeous red celluloid fountain pen from Atelier Lusso called a Carina 15. Thanks again to the munificent Murray for the loan of this pen. Let's take a look at it right now. <music> I will show the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And then I'll talk about what I like and I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Atelier Lusso is French for luxury studio or workshop, but it isn't in France, it's in Murrieta, California, where the pens are handmade by Eric Sands using custom fabricated resins and metals. I'll provide the website link in the description below. There you'll see for yourself, but be prepared to see a lot of sold out signs as these pens are made one by one by hand on a hand operated lathe. And Mr. Sands creates his own materials as well. I assume in small batches. So when the materials used up, the pen goes out of stock probably forever. I could be mistaken about that. He could be getting rod stock from other places, but he does say he makes his own materials on his website. These fountain pens are not inexpensive, but considering the artisanal nature of these pens, they are extremely reasonable. This one on loan from Murray is a luscious swirling red celluloid with a hammered rose gold colored metal clip in the distinctive Atelier ribbon style. This model is called the Carina 15, and the 15 stands for the diameter of the barrel in millimeters. I can't find this particular style of Carina 15 in the catalog, even sold out, but I did find this Carina 15 in Jonathan Brooks primary manipulation acrylic with what Sands calls a shredded asymmetrical clip for $380. And this Carina 15 in violet rose cellulose acetate with a textured clip for $385 US. So I suspect this pen, which I'm 99% sure is celluloid, would be in that price range. Overall, the pen is large. Here it is with my Leonardo Momento Zero Grande, Jonathan Brooks Earth Magic 2. If the Atelier had conical instead of flat finials, they would be the same length. And the barrel of the Leonardo is just slightly thicker. Let's just take a beauty pass of this gorgeous celluloid. It has lovely swirls, deep chatoyance, and a lot of beautiful shimmer. Look at that sparkle. It reminds me of the rock candy sticks you'd get at old-fashioned candy stores. And from the top, we see the flat top finial with the Atelier logo of a golden dragon on a red background. And this piece looks to be handmade as well. From what I can see, each pen gets its own top finial logo, color keyed to the pen itself. This one in gold with a red background. The finial is straight to the clip ring, which holds the very handsome trademark handcrafted Atelier clip. The clip is very nicely springy and usable, and that hammered metal texture is just awesome. The cap curves up to two gold colored metal bands, and you can feel that this is hand turned on a lathe as well, as there are just slight imperfections just very, very slight as you run your fingers up and down. This is not a bad thing at all. A CNC machine makes the piece perfect. Human hands make the piece unique and made especially for you. You can't see it or even measure it, but it's there and I like it. There's a small step down to the barrel, which tapers slightly down to about here where it tapers a bit more sharply to the flat bottom finial, which has a slight dome to it. The cap unscrews with a half a turn to reveal the large tapering section of the same luscious celluloid that has a nice flare towards the number six size Yovo broad steel nib. The section is nice and thick and very comfortable and it's separated from the barrel by another gold colored metal band. Let's take a closer look at this nib. It has the familiar Yovo scroll work, the Atelier Dragon logo deeply laser engraved and a B for broad. The nib and the black plastic feed are friction fit in the section. The section unscrews to reveal the included high quality standard international converter with a metal reinforced nipple. The top of the nozzle doesn't have an O-ring, but there's a space there that you could actually put an O-ring there. There are no metal parts inside the barrel or on the nozzle so i suspect you might be able to successfully eyedropper this pen the inside of the cap shows a ledge milled into it 
that meets up with the section to seal the nib from evaporation. The cap posts deeply and securely, and as the cap weighs only 12 grams, it doesn't shift the balance of the pen that much at all, although it does make it fairly long. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough to write with comfortably. This is a very comfortable writer. It fills my hand. It's very light at only 17.5 grams unposted. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Atelier Lusso Carina 15 with a Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Rosewood Ebonite, a Leonardo Ferrore Grande in Smeraldo, a Mont Blanc 149 Calligraphy Curved in black, and a Gioia Partenope Fiamma. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. The Leo Masterpiece and the Mont Blanc are both 18 karat gold nibs, whereas the others are steel. And they're all number six size nibs, except for the Mont Blanc, which is a number eight size or a number nine size, depending on how anal you are about such things. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. They're all roughly the same length, except for the Mont Blanc, which is the shortest of the lot. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine, 90 GSM paper, as always. And this is the Atelier Lusso Carina 15. And it has a number six size Yovo steel nib. Now, don't worry about that skipping at the beginning. It was open during the size comparisons for quite a bit. It's starting to wetten up here. Let's check the wetness. There we go. Very nice. Very nicely smooth and wet. As you can see, no issues whatsoever. And the ink is Hiroshizuku Kujaku, which seems to be one of Murray's favorite inks. Mine too. And here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. As to line variation, yeah, you can squeeze a little bit out, but that's not a very bouncy nib. And the line this nib makes is 0 0.8 millimeters, which makes it a Western broad, no surprise there, or a Japanese broad plus. And for our quote, and for some reverse writing, not really cutting it. Well, it is cutting the page. And for some quick writing. No issues keeping up at all. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, I like everything about this fountain pen. The size, the girth, the smooth broad nib, and the exquisite celluloid that just makes you want to eat it. It's so comfortable in the hand. You can write with it for hours, which I've been doing. I love the custom handmade, excellent quality and craftsmanship of its construction. This is a unique pen. There isn't another like it in the world. Yes, you pay extra for this kind of artisanal craftsmanship. You have to decide whether it's worth it. For me, it is worth it to have Murray buy this pen to loan to me for review. Oh, Murray! I'm oh, sorry. I'm sure he wants it back, though. Take it back. Take what back? Let it be on your head. What the hell is that? The case of the cat people? So thanks so much, Murray, for the loan. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. 
And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. For watching. And that's all she wrote.